Hello, I'm Michelle Crummel, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create lists in LaTeX. So we'll be looking at enumerated lists, which are numbered lists, and then also itemized lists, which are bulleted lists. And let's begin by just listing some basic school supplies. So pencil, calculator, ruler, notebook, if I compile now, take a minute to think about what this is going to look like. So pencil, calculator, ruler, notebook. In a word processor, we would see these four words, each on their own line, but in LaTeX, we can see that that does not happen. I don't have any line breaks coded here, so the words are just kind of flowing all together on one line. Now, I could insert line breaks, but that's not what I want to do. I'm intending to make a numbered list here. And so let's start over. To create a numbered list, we call this an enumerator list. We start with backslash begin enumerate. And when you have a begin enumerate, you also have to have a matching end enumerate. Okay, so this begins this environment, enumerate environment, but now I have to actually uh, list out all of my items. So then we're gonna type backslash item and enter our first item, which was pencil. Hit enter. Now I don't need to do anything to indicate a line break. When I type backslash item again, the compiler knows that this is a new item and it belongs on a new line. So slash item, calculator, slash item, ruler, slash item, notebook. So let's try compiling this again. And now we have our enumerated list. So as simple as that. If we want a bulleted list, then we change from enumerate to itemize. So an itemized list is a bulleted list. And then when we compile that, we see that we have bullets instead of numbers. But I'm gonna go back, just undo that, go back to my enumerated list because I wanna show you how we can then have an like a nested list. So another enumerated list inside of this one. So let's say under notebook, we have several items that we want to keep in our notebook. So I'm gonna hit return and I'm gonna indent. You can indent just once or twice, however you like it. And this is just kind of to help organize the code and make it easier to find things later if we need to. So I'm going to do a new enumerated list. So I start it with backslash begin enumerate and I need to end this enumerate and you can see how it's indented and then backslash item to list my first item. So in my notebook I have notes and then we'll do backslash item homework. We'll say these are the sections in my notebook. Slash item assessments and let's compile that and see what that looks like. So we have these sub items and the compiler automatically indented for us. And instead of numbering it one, two, three, four, now these are numbered A, B, and C. And you've got the parentheses around the number. So all of the, the numbering is happening automatically. You don't have to enter any of that manually. Let's do this one more time. Let's see how we can have like another level. And under assessments, we'll say that we have different kinds of assessments. So I'm gonna hit enter, I'm going to indent again, and I'm gonna start over with another begin enumerate slash item to list my first item. So tests, quizzes, journal entries, and we'll compile that. And you'll see how that is now numbered differently as well. Instead of ABC, now it's one, two, three. And if I want to add a fifth item, I just have to figure out where that belongs. So this was item number one, two, three, four, and the indenting really helps to stay organized because now I, if I want a fifth item, I can kind of see where that's gonna go. That's gonna go right here, slash item. And what's another supply that we might need? We'll say, highlighters and that is now number five now there are some things you can do to change 
the way the numbering appears. Maybe you don't want one, two, three, four. Maybe you want capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D. Or maybe you don't want the parentheses here. So let's look at a few other options. I'm just going to copy uh, my first list. And let's put some space in between there. With V space, we'll do one centimeter of space to separate that. And now instead of the default one, two, three, four, let's say I want capital letters here. In square brackets, I'm going to type it the way that I want it to appear. So I want it like that, capital A and then a period. And let's compile. Okay, so we ran into a compiling error. In order to make this work, we're going to need to load a package. So I'm going to go into my preamble, that's before the begin document, and use package enumerate. Okay, use package enumerate. Now let's come back down here and try this again. And now you can see that that changed that for me. Instead of one, two, three, four, I've got the A, B, C, D. Now let's try this again. I'm going to copy this here. So I just made a copy. And maybe I don't want it to be like that. Maybe I want it to start out like that. And we can do that. Maybe I want a numbered list, but I don't want it to start with number one. So here's just kind of the default, really basic list right here. But maybe I don't want it to start with number one for whatever reason. Maybe I'm, I'm creating a worksheet and I, you know, on the last page I left off with number five and now I want this list to begin with number six. I'm going to type backslash set counter enumi and then six. And you can see that now it started with number seven. So that wasn't actually what I wanted. I forgot that I need to say five. If I want my list to start at six, then I need to set the counters position at five so that the next time it sees an item, it will think the last item was number five and it'll make the next item it sees number six. So let's compile this. There we go. That gave me starting a list starting with number six. Now let's create this list again. I'm gonna go back up and get this first list that I made with all the different levels. We'll add some vertical space here just to separate things out visually. Okay, so this list started over with number one and just to make this easier for you guys to see, I'm gonna insert a page break here. Instead of this vertical space, we'll do backslash page break and that way this new list is on a new page. And instead of an enumerated list, I'm going to change it into an itemized list. Begin itemize. And then I'm just gonna copy this and replace all of these enumerates with itemize. So I have a begin and an end three times because I have three different levels of my list here and we'll compile that. And I just wanted to show you how this works in a bulleted list. So for the first level, you've got the, the solid round black bullets. And then for the second level, you've got these dashes. And then the third level, you have the asterisks. Now, sometimes you want to create a list, but maybe you don't want the numbers to show. So let's just copy one of these basic one. We'll take this one. I'm just going to copy that. Let's add some vertical space here. Okay, and let me take out the customization. And we have just a really basic enumerated list, one, two, three, four. Let's say for whatever reason, we just don't want these numbers to show. 
well, you can simply type square brackets and leave them empty. Don't type anything in the bracket. And then compile. And there's a space there where the number should be, but it's hidden. It's not displayed. Okay, so that's one way around it. You can still have something formatted like a list with all of your items, and then you're not showing any values. You can also customize really however you want this numbering to look. You can do it manually. Now, it's not ideal to number things manually. It's the wonderful thing about LaTeX is that everything does get uh, numbered automatically. So if you come back later and in between calculator and ruler, you want to add pen, it's going to automatically renumber things for you. Whereas if you had manually said one, two, three, four, now you would have to renumber everything manually after that. So here, uh, if you're okay with taking that risk, you know that you're not gonna, you know, it's not that big of a deal to you, you can do some customization here. Let's say, for example, you wanted this to be an A, but you didn't like you didn't like the parentheses before and after. You could just do something like that. Let's compile. And we see that it, it looks like that. You can um, I don't know what else you might do here. You can even type words there if you wanted to. You could do one. I don't know why you would do that. But just to point out that you can really customize this. And so these are right justified. So that is one thing to be aware of. It looks a little weird because it's ragged on the left. But if you do these customized labels, they're going to be right justified here. And then your items themselves will be left left justified over here. That's really all there is to creating lists. So thanks for watching. Hope you'll join us next time where we look at different ways to format your text and your documents.